Hello, hello my dear friends. I'm really uh, glad to do this live video every Friday. Uh, today we have a wonderful morning in Ukraine. This is Friday and I'm really excited to talk about history <laughs> with you. So today our topic is really excited because we're going to talk about Cossacks at least. <laughs> uh, who they were, how they live and uh, what state they built. <laughs> Uh, by the way, here you can see one of the most uh, powerful Cossacks uh, all the time. This is Bogdan Khmelnytsky. He was the leader of Cossack in the middle of the 17th century. But we start from beginning. <laughs> Cossacks. Cossacks. Mostly people think about Cossacks as militaries who only fight, who only I don't know, attack somebody, but um, uh, the main idea of Cossacks, of this society that's happened in Ukraine in 16th, 17th century was uh, to build independent Cossack state. Bogdan Khmelnytsky, this Ukrainian hetman, he uh, was able to build this, this state. He made uh, Ukrainian Ukraine independent. Uh, now we have different ideas about Cossacks, and I would like to introduce you this historian. His name is Viktor um, Brehunenko. <laughs> uh, he is uh, the professor of history, the doctor of history in uh, Ukrainian historian institution. Yeah. And his the main subject is uh, Cossacks, Cossack uh, time in Ukraine. Uh, you can see his live video in uh, YouTube. By the way, if you would like to know more about Cossacks, you can see some movies. I uh, post a link here in description uh, <laughs> to the movies about Cossacks. Viktor Brufunenko. Brufunenko means liar. <laughs> His surname translates as a liar. And uh, Russian blogger, Russian bloggers, Russian propagandors, yeah. <laughs> they criticized him. I found one Russian blogger who told that this man is liar, that he told uh, something, some bullshit about Cossacks, about Russia. Uh, but I really glad to, to see such kind of video because it means that uh, historians uh, they stay not only in uh, universities but we can see them in public in YouTube in internet on TV. When I uh, learn history at university, I can listen to such historian only in university. But so, Cossacks. Who they were. We need uh, to st start from the many many years ago, from the time of Kiev Rus. Actually, in the previous video, we talk about Kiev Rus. Uh, Kiev Rus was the big state, and the main person in the state was Prince uh, King Prince. <laughs> yeah, I told you about Prince Vladimir. Prince, uh, Prince was supported by um, militarists, by warriors, and uh, with time he cooperated around around himself. Uh, many warriors who became constant war, constant army in uh, in his state, so-called noble warriors, or. Um, in that time they were called boyar, boyare. <laughs> Probably you knew them boyare from Russia, but uh, the first boyare were in Ukraine, in Kyiv Rus. Everybody who would like to be on the service uh, to the state, uh, in that time uh, they can be, they can um, work for prince, um, they can fight for prince and slowly slowly if you even simple person you can be 
on the top of the society you can be even boyar yeah and in that uh, in such way um, in the time of key rus there was former military group um, noble group uh, military noble people <laughs> who represent administration of the state in uh, nine, in 1314 uh, you know that ski rus was occupied was attacked by mongolians so many people didn't survive or many people went away to western ukraine and western ukraine is close to poland and also close to Lithuania. in that time uh, there was a Lithuanian state or Lithuanian principalities Lithuania cooperated with former Russi um, state actually it's like occupied it but uh, uh, Lithuania did it's very polite Lithuania even adopted Christianity Orthodox Christianity because in that time were pagans and it was great time for Ukraine but uh, in the end of uh, 16th century Poland and Lithuania uh, united and created uh, so-called Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth or Rich Pospolita. <laughs> it was not very good for Ukrainians because slowly Polish nobles nobility occupied this land and they tried to make local people uh, Catholic. In the same time uh, the top of uh, um, Russian society, Russian society, yeah, that's a former Russian society, they started to um, reject of uh, orthodoxy, they started to reject of, um, of the Rus and uh, cooperated with Poland, with Polish, they adopted um, Catholicism. That is why for a long time Ukrainian has not um, their own commander they uh, they had no they were discriminated but uh, nevertheless here many like lower uh, lower rank of Ukrainian society uh, have been uh, former militarist uh, militaries uh, and they didn't want to be simple peasant they would like to keep its noble status but poland said no we need some amount some numbers of these people military people we don't need so much so what did these people do what do former Kiev rus militaries they run away they go away to the south of ukraine to the east of Ukraine and now this is the Zaporizhia region and uh, they settled on the lower Dnieper they settled on island by the way this is Hortica island it's place near Zaporizhia town this is the big uh, reg regional town Zaporizhia it's place on the Dnieper river and uh, you can see how Kozak's island is um, is now uh, you can see here churches uh, building this is just reconstruction now there is museum and you can see to this island you can go to this island by the ship so I recommend you to go also to Zaporozhye okay, they settled there and they started to fight against Tatars Tatars, you know that's in Crimea till now live Tatars. Uh, in that time, Tatars were very wild. Uh, for many times, they came to Ukraine and they grab uh, Ukrainian girls, uh, guys. Uh, they turn them to slave uh, slavery and they um, sell them to Ottoman Empire. 
So Cossacks tried to fight against Tatars. Okay. So many Cossacks were on the service of Ukraine of Polish uh, Polish state, but many of them were also on the Hortica Islands island here. And actually, um, what means to be Cossacks? It's not only about fighting because Cossacks they represent real power uh, power in the East Europe because they thought about Muslims and also they thought about uh, against uh, Poland as well. Uh, in that time it was very interesting interesting time because um, as you know in Europe there appeared um, uh, Protestant Protestant re religion and many state, state became Protestants Protestants. Uh, for instance, um, uh, Netherlands or Holland now. Holland uh, fought for its independence for 100 years, you, you can imagine. Uh, Catholic state organized community, uh, Catholic Liga, it's called Catholic Liga, and they uh, started the war against uh, Protestant state like Holland, England, uh, uh, Switzerland and it was the big big and very bloody war in in, uh, in Europe that's um, continue for long 30 years and Cossacks also took part in this war uh, they didn't support suppose um, support uh, any idea they just uh, fight because they want to fight yeah sometimes they fought for Austria for as Asb family sometimes for um, France uh, so it was uh, it was different but uh, nevertheless uh, they were really seri serious force uh, in the Europe uh, when they go for fight they make agreement with European ruler they told that uh, we need special condition how we will be fight for you we don't need to be like uh, <laughs> diet there yeah we represent serious uh, force so in such a way they fought against Ottoman Empire uh, um, on the side of uh, Catholic co co Catholic coalition, Catholic League. So you can see here the Cossack who fight in Europe. I don't know this flag. It's uh, Polish, I think, or Sweden. In the beginning of the 16th, 16, 16, yeah, uh, 17th century, Cossacks became they became more and more powerful. And about the middle of the 17th century, they got a really great leader. It was Bogdan Khmelnytsky. Uh, Bogdan Khmelnytsky, he very interesting man because he thought not about not only about fighting, but he thought about some national idea. He understand uh, who were Ukrainians. He would like to, I don't know if he had this idea from the first time, but slowly he realized that he can to make Ukrainian, Ukraine independent. Uh, because he understand that in Europe there appeared a new state, that new state got support from other country. Such, uh, such country as Holland, for example. So we need to build our own, own country. In uh, 1654, uh, there um, was the big uh, Westfall conference, peace in Westfall, Westfall, Westfalia, Westfall, yeah, Westfalska <laughs> conference. It was the end of the war and the leader of the great state, they would like to make peace. So uh, they make this conference uh, and they decided to separate. They decided to finish this war. Uh, 
and one of the many new new state appeared in that time here you can see new europe many modern state appeared in that that time so bogdan Malnitsk understand that he has an opportunity to build independent state and he started the war against polish nobility uh, he cooperated not only with Cossacks, but um, he involved in this process also peasants, also all people who live in that time. The main idea of um, Bogdan Polnitsky was that um, he united all the people, because before Bogdan Polnitsky there were many Cossacks leader, but uh, they... Um, united only Cossacks, just militaries, but Bogdan Milnitsky um, introduced um, national idea to people. They told that we can make independent states. So uh, they had some um, battle with Polish uh, state, with Polish nobility, and he won this battle. It happened in 1648, 1649. And here you can see, you can see his uh, entering into into Kiev in 1940, in 1648. Uh, he, Bogdan Polnitsky on the horse, surrounded by Cossacks and uh, me, uh, metropolitan and bishops, uh, greeted uh, greeting uh him here you can see golden gate it's happened near the golden gate the main entrance to the kiev in that time uh, so he many people greeted him many people recognized him as uh, uh, their own leader but in that uh, in the same time Bogdan Polnitsky understand that the Ukrainian state is very weak uh, weak here it cannot um, uh, be against uh, the big state uh, Ukraine was between Russia Moscow yeah, and be between Poland in the south it was Ottoman Empire so he understand that he need to cooperate with somebody and first, he uh, involved uh, Tatars into his campaign, military campaign, but um, uh, Tatars were not very reliable, reliable, uh, able friends um, uh, because they, are, um, they were Muslim and they support Ottoman Empire. So he looked on the Moscovian state, uh, modern Russia, yeah. Uh, because uh, Moscovian state was uh, orthodox, uh, they had the same roots, they were Slavic people, they understand us. Uh, so they offered, um, he offered to um, uh, Russian Tsar to make collaboration and um, uh, he wanted Ukraine became like vassal of the Russia. It didn't mean that uh, he wanted Ukraine uh, uh, became dependent of the Russia. He uh, uh, wanted uh, to be recognizable because in that time, if you would like to be independent, independent state, you should to be. Um, or king, but he didn't. He haven't been king. He had no king roots, prince roots. Yeah. Uh, or you should to be vassal, to be dependent of some state, and this state should recognize you. Uh, Russia first. Russia didn't want to recognize Ukraine as independent. Yes, uh, because uh, Russia, uh, Mos Moscovian kingdom. Uh, uh, thought uh, to grab this area <laughs> in some military mili military way, but at least in 1654, Bogdan Polnitsky met uh, the representatives of the Moscovian king, uh, Moscovian uh, Tsar, in uh, Peryaslav, 
and it was so called Pereyaslavska Unia, Pereyaslav Agreement between Bogdan Khmelnytsky and Russian king, Russian Tsar. So uh, Ukraine be became a vassal of uh, Russia. It was really, really very important event, uh, but um, till now many historians, many people thought that Bogdan Khmelnytsky betrayed Ukraine, that he made Ukrainian depend of the Russia. Uh, but I and many historians thought that it was really necessary step. He thought that he will be, okay, Ukraine will be recognizable and after it's uh, he can uh, reunite from the Russia yeah, and uh, go its own way and be re really independent. Uh, but it didn't happen because uh, when Bogdan Palnitsky died, he didn't have um, a really good um, uh, mm, uh, 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 he didn't have really good can candidature for be future um, headman. Uh, his son Yuri Khmelnytsky became the headman of uh, Ukraine because, but he was very weak, and it was really it became very bad situation because some Cossack recognized him, some didn't recognize. And some Cossacks uh, support other Gatman. In such way, Ukraine became so called ruin, a ruin. <laughs> and many, some uh, Cossacks were supported by the Russia, some um, by the Ottoman Empire, some the Poland, and for many years it became a. And in the beginning of the 18th century, Peter the Great. United uh, grabbed, attacked, I think, this uh, this land and uh, make Ukraine part of the Russian Empire. But nevertheless, it was really great, great period in the um, in the history of Ukraine because uh, Cossacks, it's um, unbelievable, it's a powerful um, force. Uh, on Ukrainian land. Uh, you can see some movies about Ukraine. Unfortunately, we till now we don't have uh, some really good Ukrainian movie about Cossacks, about Bogdan Pelnitsky. I think we will make it in future. Uh, you can uh, watch um, the film uh, uh, Fire and Sword, Vognem Imechem, this is a Polish movie. It's very also colorful, very interesting. Uh, it's really nice to see. <laughs> so it's really very serious topic about Cossacks uh, and uh, um, hope <laughs> you understand something. So thank you for watching me and uh, enjoy this film, enjoy this. Uh, we have many songs about Cossacks and hope you, uh, you, we, we, you can listen more <laughs> in some, in some time. Mm. Uh, so thank you for watching my video and uh, wish you have a good day, have a nice weekend and see you next week.